There is a command given in Mark 16, 15 on the basis of the finished work of Calvary. A work that is completed that Jesus looks at the disciples and insists that they do something. Mark 16, 15, 15, 15, பின்பு அவர் அவர்களை நோக்கி நீங்கள் உலகம் எங்கும் போய் சர்வ சிருஷ்டிக்கும் சுவிசேஷத்தை பிரசங்கியுங்கள் நவ் லாஸ்ட் வீக் ஐ ஷேர் வித் யூ அபவுட் த ஷேரிங் ஆஃப் த காஸ்பல் த கிவிங் ஆஃப் த குட் நியூஸ் நவ் இஸ் திஸ் அ ஸ்பெஷல் பிரிசர்வ் ஆஃப் அ ஃபியூ நோ எவ்ரி பிலீவர் இஸ் ஆஸ் டு give out the good news sarva srishtikum poi prasangiyungal endru solumbolude prasangi maar idathile karthar pesinar endru nam ninaikkukoodadu seeshargal idathile avar sonnadai kurithu nam vaasikkarom now when i talk about preaching in its deeper form but we are talking about the presentation of the good news to every believer every man can do it every woman is asked to do it a child is expected to do it as well no one is really exempted from speaking about good news now everybody shares their joy with someone you get something new you are excited maybe the other person is not excited but you are excited because you know what that something can do for you so in your excitement you talk to the other person about what you have and when you communicate to the other person about what you have you begin to see the joy in not only communicating what you have to the other individual but there is an infectious nature about the way you communicate the good news that catches on and the other person is attracted as well to what you are communicating சந்தோஷத்தோடு நச்செய்தியின் வார்த்தையை நீங்கள் பிரசங்கிக்கும் வேளையிலே மக்களோடு பகிர்ந்து கொள்ளும் வேளையிலே மற்றவர்களையும் நீங்கள் பேசும் காரியத்தை கேட்கும் பொழுது அவர்களும் கவரப்படுகிறார்கள் ஏனென்றால் உங்கள் உள்ளத்தை அவர்கள் பார்க்கிறார்கள் நீங்கள் பெற்ற சந்தோஷம் எப்பேற்பட்டது என்று அவர்கள் பார்க்கும் பொழுது அதே சந்தோஷம் எங்களுக்கும் தேவை என்று சொல்லி அவர்கள் நீங்கள் பேசும் நற்செய்தியின் வார்த்தையை ஏற்றுக்கொள்கிறார்கள் அதற்கு ஒரு நீண்ட பிரசங்கம் தேவையா கிடையாது நீண்ட பிரசங்கமே தேவையில்லை த பிரசன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் த காஸ்பல் இஸ் நாட் அ லாங் மெசேஜ் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இட்ஸ் அ சிம்பிள் கம்யூனிகேஷன் ஆஃப் வாட் ஜீசஸ் டேட் அண்ட் ஸ்டில் டஸ் இன் த லைஃப் ஆஃப் அ மேன் வாட் இட் ஈ டூ அட் த கிராஸ் வாட் இஸ் ஈ டூ டுடே இன் யுவர் லைஃப் தட்ஸ் த காஸ்பல் The gospel doesn't have to do with praying for the sick alone. The gospel doesn't have to do with baptism of the Holy Ghost. Most people start emphasizing wrong things with the gospel. So much so people don't even understand what is the gospel. Once I was speaking to a person and I asked that lady a question. I said, are you born again? She said, I'm baptized. I said, I'm not asking whether you're baptized. Are you born again? He again repeated and said, I am baptized. I said, no, I am not asking whether you are baptized. She got offended. She said, what do you mean I am baptized? I said, I am not bothered whether you are baptized. There are many people who are baptized who are not born again. She said, what do you mean? I said, have you believed the gospel? She asked, what is the gospel? I thought people said, be baptized and you will be saved. I said, sorry. Sorry. That's not what it, it, it said in the word of God. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized. He that believeth in the gospel and is baptized. So the believing in the gospel precedes the baptism. She was stunned. She said, nobody told me that. I said, which church do you go to? She mentioned some Pentecostal church. I said, shame on that place. 
If they are not saying it right, then they are misrepresenting the whole truth in their zealousness to get people baptized. Can I have an amen please? Some people are so zealous to get people baptized that they fail to understand that a man is saved not by baptism. He is not saved by baptism. He is saved by believing in the gospel. We were not asked to go preach baptism. No wonder Paul said, God didn't send me to baptize. He was not saying baptism was not a requirement. But he was trying to bring the priority right in a man's life. The priority is the communication of the good news, my friends. Hallelujah. That's the priority. Thank God for baptism. Do I baptize? Yes, I baptize people. Am I baptized? Yes, I am baptized. When was I baptized? After I got saved. Do I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking with tongues? Sure. Do I pray with tongues every day? Every day I pray in tongues. But that's not the good news. The gospel is so simple and when you understand the gospel, you understand that that becomes the deciding factor in most people's lives who are living a hopeless life, my friends. Hopelessness, hopelessness doesn't have to just do with facing a terminal sickness in life. That's not hopelessness. There are many people who are living a hopeless life because they don't have Jesus in their lives, my friends. Can I have an amen? You can have a terminal sickness and die and go to heaven because you're saved. But you cannot have a terminal sickness and die and go to hell because you don't have Jesus in your life. So what is priority? The gospel. So when you're talking about hope and hopelessness and how to turn hopeless situations around, sometimes people have it all wrong. They think we're just talking about turning a terminal sickness around into a healing experience. Now maybe... A financial disaster, you turn it around and you begin to prosper. Well, thank God for those miracles. But the underlying factor of hopelessness lies in the hearts of people who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Can I have an amen, please? And our commissioning is very clear. Give the gospel out. Last week before I closed, I told you about what T.L. Osmond wrote in one of his books. Do you pay a price to get the gospel out? Yeah, you've got to pay a price to get the gospel out. Most don't pay that price. Why? Some of them take their salvation itself for granted. I've seen people just talk others into hell just by saying he won't get saved. I said, have you spoken to them about Jesus? They said, no, it, it, it just won't work. They don't give the other man a fair chance to hear the gospel. Now look at Mark 16, 15 please. And I want to spend some time with that verse. Sometimes we just read that verse and we just move on thinking it's a simple verse. No, it's not a simple verse. It's a defining verse. Can I have an amen please? It's a defining verse. It is not an ordinary verse. Mark 16, 15. It talks about the quality of a man's life. What do you value? Did Jesus play a place a requirement on who he would select to speak this good news? No, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Everybody has a right to declare the gospel. If you are a saved man, declare the gospel. Speak it out. Give it out. Mark 16, 15. Evangelion in the Varte. It's a Greek word. Evangelion. It means good news. Good news is real good news. 
Good news to who? For everyone who will hear and accept. Bad news for who? The ones who will hear and reject. So when you talk about good news, there is a flip side to the good news also. Can I have an amen? A loud amen please. Natsaydin Varte. Adar ki innore pakkamu merikrede inda makkal marandu vada kudad. Yaru ke natsaydi. Ketkaravargalum. Adai yetru kholgaravargalukum natsaydin Varte. Durchaydin Varte yaru ke ketta pirage adai thalli vidagra makkalikke. Apni enran. Or mani den. Natsaydin Varte yaman pesum borde. Awan yangai, wirtigran, thannei rachita Yesu ayam awan wirtigran. Now listen, follow carefully. When a man presents the gospel, who is he lifting up? His savior. I said his savior. He is lifting up his redeemer. He is lifting up the one who saved him from his sins. He is talking about the one who he is excited about. Now others may not share in his excitement. Others may not share in his so-called enthusiasm. Sometimes I've seen people poo-poo away the idea of, you know, the born-again experience as being just some little bit of enthusiasm. One man told me when I got saved, all this will die away someday. 23 years have come and gone, it's not died away. It's become stronger. I have never stopped telling people about Jesus. I have never stopped telling people about the good news. It has not died away. It's not just some enthusiasm that comes at the whims and fancies of an ordinary man. It's a real blessing that comes to stay in a man's life. Because the blesser himself descends into a man's life. That is hopeless and gives hope to that man. So what are you talking about? We are talking about a real life situation. Nambikayatta oru sool nilayai, nambikayulle sool nilayaga matrum devan. Oru manidhanudya vaikkelai avar pravesi kumpudu, adhu nadakkara daga irukkaradu. Agayaltaan natchaydin vaatthayai naam prasangikkaro. Yaarukke sarva srishtikkum. I told this a couple of months ago and I'm going to repeat it again. There will always be people who don't want you. There will always be people who want you. Go for the ones who want you. I'm going to explain it this way. Peter was more accepted by the Jews. Paul was rejected by the Jews. Can you imagine that? A man who fought so much for Judaism was pushed away from the very people who he fought for. But then the Gentiles opened up. He went to the Gentiles. Today he is called an apostle to the Gentiles. He said, God who worked mightily through Peter, worked through me with the Gentiles. There will always be the ones who don't want you. There will always be the ones who want you. Forget about the ones who don't want you. Go for the ones who want you. If someone doesn't want the message you preach, leave them behind. You're not answerable to them. You're answerable to the God who saved you. Forget about them. Isaiah 51 puts it so beautifully. It says, why are you frightened of a man who will die and go to hell? And why are you fearing a man who is oppressing you every day? Why do you fear the fury of the oppressor? Who is this man that you must fear him? And I am the God who called you. I am the God who chose you. I am the God who picked you up. Why do you fear the fury of the oppressor? Read Isaiah 51. It's an amazing portion of scripture. Isaiah 51. 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 You stand before God and say, well, I was frightened of this man. Forget it. You'll be frightened more of him who called you. If someone doesn't want the word that you are preaching, leave the person. Go for the other man. That's what Osborne said. 
He said, no man has a right to hear the gospel twice before the entire world has heard it once. The question is, has the world heard it once? Muru ulagam suviseshate innum ketka the pachatile Uruvanaki irendaram nampoi natsaydi in warte pressing pressing ikarade Tere alle and a tear lost man pesa de kuritanan sendra warat le ade kuritanan pesin it. Why does he make that statement? Is it a harsh statement? Yes. What right has a man to hear the gospel twice? What right has a man to tell another man, well, let me think about what you're saying. I'll see whether I'll follow this Jesus. My friends, if he doesn't want to follow Jesus, just leave the man. There's always another person to go after. There's someone else who is needy. There's someone else who is living a hopeless life. Give the person the gospel. There will always be some who will accept your message. There will always be some who will reject your message. Go for the ones who will accept your message. Give them the good news. You work in an office environment. There will be 25 people who will hate you. But there will be that one in that organization who is constantly asking God. Are you real? Do you really exist? Can you speak to me? And if you're serious and you're really hungry for God to use you, then God will show you that individual. And he'll give the gospel to that man and that man's life will turn around. What about the 25 who hate you? Forget about them. I said, forget about them. You look at the empty chairs here this evening. Is it because they're all are busy this evening? So busy that they're not able to come to church? No. They are not that busy that they can't be here this evening, but they choose to stay away. When there are church folk who are staying away, what about the others in the world who are not accepting Christ? Who are even now dying and going to a lost eternity? What do you do about them? It's up to you to pluck as many as possible out of the clutches of hell. But what of the ones who want to go there by choice? Let them go. Let them go. That's their choice. Some of them believe that hell will be like a spice jet. Everything is going to be good there. Sorry. Everything won't be good there. Everything will be a deception there. Vanity of vanities personified is what you are going to see in hell. There will be no satisfaction there. There will be no end there to the kind of craving that goes on in a man's life. That craving will be there, but there will be no end. There will be no fulfillment. There will be no joy. So get this message right. If there are people who want to listen to you, they will come to you. You have a message to give them. Give it to them. If the others reject you, forget about them. Just forget about them. They are not your boss. They are not your savior. They are not your redeemer. They didn't save you anyhow. They themselves require a savior to have them out of the mess that they are in. So you just go ahead and give the other man the gospel. Talk to the other person. Give the other person the gospel. Because it is to every creature that God looks at a man and says, Give the good news message to. Because this is a world filled with hopelessness. I remember a friend of mine writing a book. And in that booklet he wrote about how in America, when a man dies, they try to remove the pain of death by making everything look green. They'll roll out a green lawn and make everything look pleasant. Because they are trying to remove the sting of death. And somehow they, to a certain extent, are able to pull it off. And he writes in his book, he says, Sometimes you look at the man lying there in the coffin and he looks real good. He looks far better than he looked when he was living in this earth. 
they have dressed him up good. The morticians have done a good job. When he walked on the earth, he never dressed that good. But they are lying in the coffin, he looks real good. But he makes another statement in that book. And that's what I'm trying to put across to you this evening. He said, most people don't understand that every day they are waking up in a big graveyard. It's a graveyard of people who are living dead. Hopeless. That's why we are called to give the good news. And if you don't catch that, you've not got nothing. This is like a eternal, this is like a place that is having people who are living dead. It's a big graveyard that we wake up every morning into. A graveyard of people who are just going about like zombies, not doing nothing real in life. They are so mechanically inclined to doing things, they don't know the living God. Just think about it. They dress good, they look good, they are walking good, they are talking good. But really goodness is absent in their life. Because they don't know the God of goodness. Can I have an amen please? Look at any person. He looks good, he dresses good. But ask the man, do you know Jesus? He looks at you in a strange way. He says, pardon me, what do you mean? Know Jesus. I was just listening to a small little clip of someone being interviewed yesterday on television. The interview was going on for one hour. And this lady, a woman who works with HIV, positive people were speaking. I mean, I just walked into the room and this program was on, so I just listened to a little bit of what she was saying and I didn't feel very moved by what she was saying. She was talking about working hard and then talking about the God of her understanding and so many things. And finally, the man on the program asked her, which is your best curse word? And you must see the young people just, you know, on their seats waiting to hear which is her best curse word. And she's thinking about which is her best curse word. I mean, we are living in a world of darkness, my friends. Don't look at the people who walk on this earth as though they are having everything made. This is a walking graveyard. And in the midst of this walking graveyard of dead people, Jesus looks at us and says, preach the good news. Tell them the gospel. It's up to us to decide who we listen to. That's our choice. You make the choice. You give out the good news. Don't say, well, let me finish with college and then I'll give out the good news. Let me finish with, you know, school, then I'll give out the good news. No, you give the good news while you're in college, while you're in school. Do you know why I'm talking to you about it? Because there was a man who told me one time, I'm going to serve the Lord on such and such a day at such and such a time. And I was stunned. I thought he had heard from God like some of these people hear from God. I thought God spoke to him about the day and the time. And I asked him, how did you know the day and the time? Because I really expected to hear him say, well, I heard from God. Like Mary Baxter had heard from God on the day and the time and the hour in which she would be healed. So I said, my God, how do you know the date and the time? He smiled and said, that's the day and the time that I'm going to retire. I thought, poor man, he's never read the last chapter of Ecclesiastes. About the molas falling out, the grinders falling out, the legs shaking and trembling. Such a man is going to stand and give out tracks. When all his lifetime, when the best of his life was given to him, he was ashamed of Jesus. Such a man is not going to do anything. And I'll tell you, I'm not impressed with such people either. Most people go gaga with such people. They say, why? He's going to spend the last part of his life serving the Lord. You better serve the Lord today. I said, you better serve the Lord today. Don't wait for your retirement. <laughs> Read the book of Ecclesiastes. 
the last chapter talks about the end of a man it talks about how the silver cord will be cut the pot will be broken so many things will happen man will start trembling his eyes will start failing i mean it's a sordid picture of a end of a man but that's not the time for you to serve the lord you serve the lord today can i have an amen please you give out the gospel today look for the man who's hungry to hear from you just give him the gospel forget about the others natchaidin vaarthai aarvathodu kekka vendiya manidhanai neengal sandithu avarkku natchaidin vaarthai kodungal mattravargalai kurithu ennaadirungal ஏனென்றால் இன்றைக்கு நீங்கள் இயேசுக்காக வாழ்ந்து இந்த நச்செய்தியின் வார்த்தை கொடுப்பீர்கள் என்றால் நம்பிக்கையற்ற சூழ்நிலைகளை மாற்றக்கூடிய ஒரு மனிதனாக அவ்விதமான மக்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையில நீங்கள் இருப்பீர்கள் financial breakthroughs. We are talking about real life situations, my friend. How many of you can say amen to that? real life situations we are talking about a real life blessing that god wants to give to people and only if you want to be an instrument that can take that blessing i want to be an instrument i made the choice so many years ago and nothing is going to deter me that's a choice i've made for life you don't have to think up ways and means to give out the gospel just be sensitive to god and he'll help you give out the gospel the gospel is not a big long one hour message i preach messages i preach messages that vary from 6 minutes to 13 minutes to 40 minutes to 1 hour to 3 hours there are times in bible college i have spoken for 4 hours at a stretch so one hour is not a big message sometimes they'll just come and tell me just keep preaching i said why the other man's not turned up so the next hour i take and then they'll come and tell me the man is not come still you continue so i continue the third hour and finally when i come to the fourth hour, i don't want to give up i said i've gone this long let me just continue and finish let him come and take the fourth hour some other time but it's not big messages my friends it's such a simple thing gospel is such a simple thing just one sentence actually in fact you can learn it in, in as many languages as possible if you can just one sentence the jesus died for you he rose up from the grave and is seated at the right hand of the father and if you'll accept him into your life you'll be born again that's the gospel that's the gospel some people think well is that as effective as a one hour message my friends that's more effective if you ask me because that man has to make a choice within one second or one minute or even before you finish your sentence he's got to come to a place of decision natchaidin vaarthe or periya prasangame alla prasangiyungal endra avar sonnathu unmai dhaan endra aanal oru one hour ku nam prasangam panna vendum endra alla natchaidin vaarthe surukkamaga nam adu enna endra arindhu solvom endral makkal rachikapaduvargal நம்பிக்கையற்ற மக்கள் நம்பிக்கை உள்ள மக்களாக அவர்கள் மாறுவார்கள் ஹோப்லெஸ் மென் அண்ட் விமன் வில் பிகம் ஹோப்ஃபுல் மென் அண்ட் விமன் லெட்ஸ் ரைஸ் அப் டு அவர் ஃபீட் திஸ் ஈவ